ever wonder why it is that most of us are okay with some animals being pets that we love and care for, and other animals we see as food? What is it that makes us go from petting one to eating another? I was an animal lover. My biggest dream was to have a horse. But my mom was a single mom and it was just too expensive. Instead, one summer, I found a flock of sheep in our neighborhood. I went to visit them every day. I got to know them. I gave them names. There was Amanda, Donna, Holly, and a bunch of others. Sheep may seem all the same to us, but sheep have an exceptionally good eye for recognizing individual faces of both other sheep and of humans. Maybe some of you have a photograph on your desk or in your phone of someone you love. So sheep are the same. They like to see photographs of other sheep that, that, know, that, that, that they know. And science has shown that that makes them feel calm. And not only are sheep capable of recognizing a big number of individual faces, they also remember those faces long after those individuals were sent to slaughter. One day when I went down to visit my friends, as usual, and I think you can see where this is heading, Amanda, Donna, Holly, and all the others were gone. Later on, I finally got the horse to take care of. So this is me with Figaro, and we did everything together. But I was a meat eater. I loved Figaro, but I also loved fried chicken in sweet and sour sauce, and I would buy hot dogs with one hand while taking care of Figaro with the other hand. I loved animals, but I was also responsible for the killing of animals. Never horses, never sheep, but a handful of other species, cows, pigs, not to mention chickens and fish. One evening when I was sitting at the kitchen table, I had come home from the stable and I was alone, everyone else had eaten, and in front of me on the plate, I had a burger. It was this kind of burger that has a thick slice of sausage in between two burger buns. I had just heated in the microwave and I sat down to eat. And all of a sudden I thought, what was the difference between the animals that I cared for so much and this animal that had become this piece of meat? I figured it had something to do with some animals being visible and other animals being invisible. And I remember something that my grandmother had told me. Once we have seen something, we can no longer unsee it. And that happened to my grandmother. My grandmother always took us to the Chinese restaurant on the last day of school before the summer holidays. I always had fried chicken in sweet and sour sauce. My grandmother always told the same story. Uh, it was about when she had seen a chicken being slaughtered. And the chicken had had its neck cut off and the body of the chicken had been running around, blood sprouting. My grandmother was horrified she did not eat chicken again for the rest of her life. Today, we don't get to see the animals in the same way that my grandmother did. They are hidden from us. 
And I found out something shocking. Almost 100 million chickens are raised for food each year in Sweden alone. 100 million. That is a very big number. But where are they? Just think about it. When was the last time you saw a chicken out in a field? We tend to, we tend to believe in the myth of the small family farm, when the truth is the factory farm. The animals are crammed together inside. They never get to feel the breeze or see the sunlight. In fact, the only time many of them might even see the sun can be on the last day, on the day when they are sent to slaughter. One thing I find fascinating about chickens, and there are many things about chickens, but there's one thing in particular, and that is that the hen communicates with her chicks already when they are inside of the egg. And the chickens too communicate with each other from inside of the egg. So when the chickens hatch, they already know their mother and they know their siblings. And the mother, she protects them with her wings. But for chickens raised for food, the reality is very different. They hatch in a machine, and there are no protective wings under which they can feel safe. If we would treat a dog or cats or any other companion animal in the same way that many of the animals in the food industry are treated, we would be charged with animal cruelty. So why are we doing this? Does this mean that we are cruel? I don't think we are, but we just don't see the animals that we eat. They are out of sight, they are out of mind, they are out of the package. And furthermore, we tend to deny feelings in the animals that are raised for food. Feelings that we take for granted in ourselves. Feelings like, Joy, happiness, fear, sorrow, love. And we deny them those feelings, possibly in order to continue eating them. Before dedicating myself to working for animals, I was a social worker. And while working with poor families in urban areas in Bolivia, people would sometimes ask me, why do you care for animals so much when you see there's so much human suffering? And I would always respond that, you know, to, to care for people does not prevent us in any way to also do what we can for animals. We can do both. And isn't it extraordinary that each of us have the opportunity to change the world for animals simply by changing what's on our plate. We have a fantastic opportunity every time we sit down to eat. Three to five times a day, we can make a difference. Why wouldn't we do it? And I would also like to encourage you to try to see the invisible animals. We can treat those animals in the same way that we treat our companion animals. I believe that when we care for animals, we bring out the best in all of us. We bring out empathy. We bring out compassion. We bring out the capacity to feel, to recognize, and to understand what another being is feeling. And if we act on that, and if we let compassion lead us, 
just imagine what kind of world we could create. Thank you.